Boy, do I have a treat for you. Billboard Top 100, going back to Billboard Top 100, the week of, I believe it's February the 8th, 1971. I haven't touched on, no, February 13th, 1971. Uh, some of the big hits on this uh, Hot 100 that you're probably familiar with, Remember Me by Diana Ross, which was written by Ashford and Simpson. That was a great record by her, by Lost 45. Stony End by Barbara Streisand. Amazing Grace by Judy Collins on here. Amos Moses by Jerry Reed, a genius record. Record by Jerry Reed. He written some fantastic records, Jerry Reed. He just, the guy was a freaking genius. Gosh, dog it. But the song I want to talk to you about debuts at number 87 on Billboard's Hot 100, February 13th, 1971. R. Dean Taylor, Ain't It a Sad Song, or Ain't It a Sad Thing, rather, is the name of the record. This was his, this was his follow up to his mega hit, Indiana Wants Me. Back in the fall of 1970, uh, R.D. Taylor from Canada, originally from Toronto, Tanda. <laughs> I'm so excited I can't even talk. Now I'm making up names of countries. Tanaka. <laughs> that sounds like a name of an island or some, maybe an artificial island. I could create one these days. And set up my own radio station on there. Play whatever the heck I want to. <laughs> radio Tanaka. How about that? No, he's from Canada. R.D. Taylor from Canada, he became a songwriter at Motown, hired as a songwriter at Motown in 1964. He was assigned to Motown subsidiary label, one of their subsidiary labels called the VIP label. His first record, first record by R.D. Taylor, <laughs> it was a bomb. Actually, it wasn't even released. My Ladybug, Stay Away From That Beetle, his satire about the Beatles, slated to be released in March of 1964 as the, as the country was in the grips of Beatlemania, but Motown, they passed on it. They thought the song was too weak. The song after that, Let's Go Somewhere, which was written by, which was written in conjunction with Holland Dozier, Holland the legendary, Eddie Holland, Brian Holland, and Lamont Dozier, Let's Go Somewhere. It was put out as a single, but it was a regional hit. Dan, in 1966, there's a ghost in my house. If you haven't heard it, you got to listen to this record. This is one of the best Motown records that never became a hit. Classic signature Motown sound. I'm almost convinced the Funk Brothers played on this record. There's a Ghost in My House by R. D. Taylor, produced by Holland Dozier Holland, co-written with Holland, Holland Dozier Holland as well. It was, it was a commercial disappointment. But get this, it took off in England. Some of the clubs in the northern part of England, the no northern soul clubs, started playing that record. And it went to number three in England in 1974. There's a ghost in my house by R.D. Taylor. Indeed, R.D. Taylor was not a stranger in England. In 1968, another Motown release by R.D. Taylor, Gotta See Jane, went to number 20 in Britain. He wasn't the one-hit wonder that many people thought when he came out with Indiana Wants Me. Then, 1967, There's a Ghost in My House, released as a single, was not a hit, but 1967 was a dang good year for R. Dean Taylor. One of the songs that he co-wrote became a big hit by The Temptations, All I Need. We're back around the spring and summer of 1967, another Lost 45 by The Temptations, although it was a top 10 hit. Late 60s, now by 1967, Holland Dozier Holland, they left Motown, had that dispute with Barry Gordy, and uh, they were the prime songwriters for The Supremes. They wrote the hit records by The Supremes, Holland Dozier Holland. They had to be replaced. Motown set up in response to the departure of Holland Dozier Holland, one of Motown's responses, they set up a crack production and songwriting team called the Klan. And guess who was a member of the Klan? R. Dean Taylor. Co-wrote Love Child by the Supremes, written by the Klan. I'm Living in Shame, written by the Klan. R. Dean Taylor in that, in that group. 1969, 1970, uh, well, Motown Record, they set up another subsidiary called Rare Earth. They assigned R. Dean Taylor to the Rare Earth label. And uh, R. Dean Taylor started releasing solo records again. In 1970, he hit the jackpot. Oh, my God, he hit the jackpot. 
a song that was inspired by Bonnie and Clyde. He, he wrote Indiana Wants Me after watching Bonnie and Clyde, the movie. And it went to number five in the States, went to number one in Canada, went to number two in England. Indiana Wants Me. But the song I want to play for you coming in at number 87 was not a hit, not really commercial enough to be top 40. Ain't it a sad thing? This is R. Dean Taylor from Billboard's Hot 100, February 13th, 1971.